Fantastic. I'd love to welcome everybody back into the Independent Investor Channel studio here. We have an absolutely special guest with Fox Royalty, uh, the Chief Investment Officer, Mr. Spencer Cole here. Talk about one of the most intriguing companies that I've had the pleasure of reviewing uh, here as of late. Uh, company stock price has just been on absolute, it's been on a tear here. Last five days up 11%, uh, month up 32%. And we're talking over the last six months, 65 percent and over the last year, 60 percent. So these guys are absolutely doing something right. They're absolutely banking on a lot of transactions. I'm sure we'll get into that. But without further ado, Spencer, I'm going to kick over the floor to you and uh, give us a, a general introduction uh, for yourself and, and the company that you represent. Absolutely, Ryan. And thanks so much for having me to, here today. Um, my name is Spencer Cole. I'm the Chief Investment Officer of Vox Royalty Corp. Um, a little bit about myself, as you can he hear from my unfortunate uh, accent, and hopefully it's not painful on your listeners' e ears. Um, I'm from Australia originally, but based in uh, Toronto now. Um, I'm a mining engineer uh, and have worked with some of the largest mining companies globally, such as BHP and South32. Um, and I guess you know my role and how I came to be at Vox was I co-founded a business called Mineral Royalties Online. And we developed uh, the world's largest proprietary database of mining royalties. Uh, and then we merged that, that business into, into Vox a few years ago. Um, and so that was our, uh, myself and one of our colleagues' entry points to Vox. Um, Vox, as a company, we are a precious metals-focused, high-growth mining royalty investment company listed on the TSX Venture Exchange and the OTC um, QX market. Um, our business, in a nutshell, is acquiring um, really attractive uh, royalty streams on other people's minds um, where we can see you know, significant amounts of yield and revenue uh, for our investors going forward. And I'm, I'm happy to un unpick that uh, through subsequent questions, Ryan. Absolutely. And just for my viewing audience, uh, just what uh, Spencer was talking about here, TSX uh, Venture under the ticker symbol VOX, uh, here on the uh, U.S. exchanges, the OTC Quality Board Markets, VOXCF. And I will provide all that information as well as some amplifying I used in the production of the coverage of Vox in the description below. So, Spencer, just unwrap for us a little bit what, what a mining royalty is uh, for some of our investors. I had to do some homework when I dug into Vox, and I'm sure there's a lot of investors out there that would love to take you know, a shot at Vox, but they just wanted to understand a little bit what what gives below the surface on what an actual royalty is. Sure thing, Ryan. So a, a royalty or a mining royalty is really just a contract between two parties. Um, it, it's typically a, a contract between a mining company and a, another company or an individual. Uh, and what it entitles that the holder of that royalty to it, it is a future revenue stream or an income stream. And it's typically um, a percentage of revenue, usually about one to three percent of all the revenue from that mine. Now, the way that these mining royalties are most commonly created is, let's say, Ryan, you 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 find a, you know you hit the mother load and you find a gold deposit, but you don't have two hundred million dollars in your back pocket. Well, yep. I don't know if you do, maybe if you do, or maybe you don't. But you, typically, these prospectors don't have two hundred million dollars to build the mine themselves. Okay. So, what's very common is they will sell that discovery um, to a larger mining company who can um, build the mine. And in return, that prospector will be given a mining royalty contract that gives them a future percentage of, of revenue or profit um, if the mine gets brought into production. That That's incredible. Yeah, I, I was super intrigued when I did my, it's kind of like mineral rights. Is that kind of the same idea, Spencer? So typically the difference is that the mining company holds the mineral rights. So they have the right to mine. And then as sort of a, um, I guess, a, an obligation attached to those mining rights, yeah. the royalty holder gets a percentage of any of the profit or revenue from those mineral rights. So the mining company holds the mineral rights. The royalty holder owns a contract that is sort of almost like a mortgage o o over those um, mineral rights. Understood. So if I'm an investor, what are the benefits of investing in mining royalties versus other commodity-based assets, Spencer? So it's a great question, Ryan. And, and I guess some of the key benefits um, to owning a royalty rather than, you know, a different type of commodity. So, you know, if you're an investor 
and you're worried about inflation. Uh, I think all of us are worried about inflation at the moment. I'm, mm -hmm. uh, I'm currently planning uh, my wedding at the moment in, 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 in Southern California. And uh, I can assure you I'm facing a lot of inflation from yeah. every single cost line item in the budget. Um, so I'm, I'm feeling it. Um, but yeah. if, you're, if you're looking to get a, a hedge on inflation, commodities, you know, historically have always performed well in high inflation environments. So, you know, you can obviously have your pick of a lot of different commodity based benchmarks. You could buy a physical metal. You could buy bars of gold. You could buy the mining company. Um, you know, you could buy the, the GDX or a, a, an equity based yeah. indice, or you could buy a company like a royalty company. A royalty company offers you the benefit of all of the upside um, link that a mining company gets. So when the price of gold goes up, you get that upside as a royalty holder. Um, when the company hits, you know, further exploration success, you get that benefit um, as a royalty holder. Um, when the company, uh, the mining company expands production, you get that production upside and your revenue increases for the royalty. Um, but then importantly, uh, a royalty company doesn't face any of the downside that a mining company does. So, you know, we as a royalty investment company, we don't pay operating costs. We don't pay capital costs. Our first check out um, and our first investment is our last investment. So we're in an attractive uh, position where we sit back and we collect checks from, you know, all the different royalty properties that we have royalties on. Um, and we get the benefit also of, of diversification. So we have 54 separate royalties. If one of those mines, you know, God forbid collapsed or one of those companies went bankrupt, um, we've got a host of other, over 50 other you know, you know, royalty investments. So investors get all of the upside that they would otherwise get, you know, from any other commodity based investment without any of the downside in a much more diversified risk um, uh, uh, portfolio um, fashion. Yeah, that's exactly what I saw when I was looking at it, it you know, really limited the risk, but it, it spread your, you know, the diversification across multiple properties and multiple jurisdictions around the world too, Spencer. What makes a royalty company successful? In other words, you know, there's other uh, royalty companies out there that I looked at as well, just to try to cross compare with what you guys have got. You know, what what makes uh, what is the pedigree that goes into a successful uh, royalty company and kind of give us an idea of what maybe differentiates you guys from your peers. Absolutely. So I think one of the key uh, one of the key things that makes a royalty company successful is, you know, the ability to truly understand mining properties and mining assets. Um, and so to truly understand where is the value in the ground here, um, where are the risks? You know, mining is obviously a very risky business. Um, and, and, and what is the true probability that this discovery will be brought into production? Um, so at Vox, our business has been specifically constructed for generalist investors who perhaps you know, aren't mining engineers themselves. So they, they aren't able to pick the right mining projects. Uh, investors in Vox get the benefit of our management team consists of mining engineers and geologists on the front lines of our business. So anytime we're evaluating a new royalty investment, um, we have our own engineering team and our own mine, um, geology team who's reviewing the drill holes, reviewing the engineering work to be able to say that every time we allocate a dollar of capital to a new royalty investment, we truly understand what the risk adjusted returns on that invest investment are going to be. So one thing for investors to be wary about is, you know, not all royalty companies offer the same deep technical expertise that Vox has. Um, you know, historically, there have been some royalty companies that have perhaps had too many mining investment bankers um, who perhaps outsource some of their technical due diligence. Um, we, we do almost all of our technical due diligence in-house to ensure that we're picking the right mines and the right mining projects. So that's one key aspect of, of, of what makes um, a royalty company successful is a technical management team like Vox's. Another key aspect to our business, um, Ryan, that is absolutely critical to create value for shareholders is how do you source uh, mining royalties uh, and how do you ensure that when you buy them, you know, you're paying disciplined, attractive prices um, for those assets because, you know, there's a lot of royalties on the planet. You know, in our royalty database, we have over 8,000 um, that, we, that we're aware of. But um, paying too much for royalties results in, you know, poor returns for investors, obviously. So 
as a company, we, we rely heavily on some really interesting sort of innovative ways to source royalties that our competitors are blind to. So for example, you know, we historically bought um, a royalty from a hearing aid technology company. Um, we bought another royalty from an automotive parts company, um, another royalty from a telecommunications company. Yeah. So we're able to consistently use our, our royalty database, which you know we've developed in-house, which is the world's yeah. largest royalty database, um, nice. and a, de a deal sourcing network um, around the globe to find royalties that are really attractive um, from a, a mining and geology perspective. But importantly, we're able to get in front of those deals without any of our competitors aware of them. So we're able to pay very attractive prices so that you know we're, we're, we're allocating you know, the right amount of money to the right assets um, so that our investors get all the benefit of that upside as, as those mines you know, um, start generating revenue for, on our royalties. So I think those are two of the key uh, elements that make a royalty company successful, technical management picking the right projects and a deal sourcing machine that can, that can source large volumes of attractively priced um, royalty deals. Fantastic. How does cash flow versus risk need to be managed, Spencer? Yeah, so this is a really interesting question, Ryan, because a lot of investors uh, uh, can get you know seduced by revenue, um, you know, and 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 it's easy, you know, when you see a company spitting out a bunch of revenue, it's it's easy to say, well, is that success? You know, is does that define the success of the business? But yeah. obviously, you know, dollars are uh, dollars are dollars, but they don't necessarily come with the same volume of risk. So, for example you know, a, a, a dollar of royalty revenue that comes from the Democratic Republic of Congo is not going to be equal to a dollar of royalty revenue Australia. from Western Australia. That's right. um, so, you know, I guess when when we as, as Vox, uh, when we're evaluating new investments, you know, we're, we're really obsessive about looking at what 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 is the potential revenue profile, but equally importantly, how much risk is coming with each each dollar of revenue. Um, which is why when you look at our portfolio of 54 royalties, we're heavily weighted towards what we'd call safer jurisdictions. So 80% of our royalties are in Australia, um, yeah. the United States and Canada yeah. by design. Um, because if we can reduce the amount of risk associated while maximizing the, um, the royalty revenues in our portfolio, you know, for our investors, that's the best possible way to maximize truly risk adjusted returns. Um, rather than just blindly chasing revenue uh, that yeah. may have a huge amount of risk attached to it. Yeah, absolutely. Going after those tier one jurisdictions that you talk about, Spencer, absolutely. St take a step back uh, to talk a little bit about the history of, of Vox Royalty, you know, when and why it was created, um, how it's grown and, and what makes Vox unique. You've talked about it a little bit, but I was able to earmark a ton of different differentiating factors. The, the the one is the one that's in all of your guys' side. The fact that you're trading at such a discount on the stock to the market, as good as the numbers are, I think I think there's still an, an immense amount of value here. And you're just touching on a, on a small pocket about it. But just give us a little rundown of the history of Vox, if you would, Spencer. Absolutely, Ron. So Vox as a company has been around for eight years. Um, and the original, I guess, the seed of an idea that, that grew into um, what Vox is today was um, a group of a group of, uh, of, of family office investors in the United States who really liked uh, really liked the you know the, the exposure to commodities and really wanted to get an inflation hedge, but they didn't like the returns and frankly, I guess some of the, the how risky the, the, the junior end of the of the mining industry was. So they said, you know, to our, to our, our, our founder, Kyle, they said, is there a better way for us to get this commodity based um, upside without taking on all the risk of just, you know, throwing darts at a junior mining dartboard? Um, and out of that, um, the company was seeded with, with seven and a half million dollars uh, eight, uh, eight years ago. Um, that's been patiently grown uh, in, in terms of our royalty portfolio. So from that seven and a half million dollars, um, we, we've grown it and we've allocated about $30 million um, of capital to build our portfolio of 54 royalties. And now, you know, the, the, the market capitalization of that is about $150 million. So we've been quietly and efficiently building um, a, a portfolio of, of royalties 
that is in is one of the largest portfolios in the world, um, but in a very capital efficient and disciplined manner. Um, because we were we were a, a private company for for seven years, um, that that discipline of of not having you know not being able to issue equity um, in public markets, that discipline of being very capital light, um, has stayed with us as we've gone public last year. So. I guess that's a little bit about the history of the company um, and, and why it was created. So, in terms of how we've grown, um, you know, there's 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 two ways to acquire royalties. One is is to acquire existing royalties, which I touched on before, which is I guess going to the prospector that made the mineral discovery and buying the existing royalty. That's what we focus on. The other way that um, you can buy royalties is I guess funding mining companies. So writing them a check. To help them build their mines, and we've back tested, you know, thousands of royalties that have been sold historically, and consistently we've seen much better returns through buying existing royalties from prospectors. So that's how we've grown. We've typically bought royalties from prospectors and groups that originally held the mining projects, um, and rather than the other side of the other path, which is funding mining companies, which we don't think the returns um, are there for us. Um, mm. And then, you know, to your last point on your question, what makes uh, Vox unique? You know, I touched on a few points earlier, the fact that we have a heavily technical management team of mining engineers and geologists. Uh, I touched a little bit on our royalty database uh, of over 8,000 royalties, which allows us to, to, to identify forgotten but really attractive royalties. Um, beyond that, you know, you did touch on, I guess, valuation. Um, I think one, one thing that is sort of an an opportunity within our portfolio is because we have so many Australian royalties, but we are listed uh, in, in Canada, I think there is still a bit of an understanding gap in terms of the value and the quality of the royalties that we have in Australia. Um, and that was one criticism when we went public last year, Ryan, was, yeah. you know, business model sounds interesting, but I don't know all these Australian mines and these Australian mining companies. Um, despite the fact they're listed on the Australian Stock Exchange. Um, so yeah. we we have been quite heavily discounted because of that heavy weighting towards Australia, which for us seems a bit irrational because we view Australia, particularly Western Australia, as probably the, you know, the best place on the planet to mm -hmm. build and operate a, a gold mine. So um, I think that is one unique aspect to our business that we are, we're the second largest holder of mining royalties in Australia, second only to a $30 billion company, Franco Nevada. Um, so I think that exposure to Australia and that first mover advantage in Australia sets us apart from a lot of competitors and gives us a real edge uh, in continuing to grow in a market like Australia. So <clears throat> it segues perfectly into my next question. What does what the future hold for Vox Royalty? I know right now, and correct me if the information has changed five producing assets right now looking to grow really into 2022 but really into 2023 as you guys look to potentially double that book of producing assets that that is incredible the amount of uh, transactions that you guys have been able to make but give us a little bit of a synopsis on where you think the future what the future holds for vox royalty as you look to expand the portfolio base I think you've hit the nail on the head, Brian. Um, you know, one of the key aspects to our, our the coming quarters that investors can really look forward to is just a, a huge amount of organic growth um, within our royalty portfolio. Um, so, as you mentioned, we expect to, to organically increase from five producing royalties to ten producing royalties by late 2023, and we think there's there's a healthy amount of upside on that as well. Um, so that's without a single additional dollar of capital required. That's just based on the 54 royalties that we have in the portfolio today. So naturally, as we double the number of producing royalties, it um, you know revenue will will follow from that. So analysts have our revenue um, uh, more than doubling uh, uh, over the next two years, which is you know quite quite exciting. Um, beyond that, you know I think we're continuing to work on our our sort of investor awareness campaigns. So I think commencing trading on the OTC exchange in, yeah. in the US was it was a huge step um, forward for us because it helped us connect better with US based investors. Um, and in the medium term, we are looking at um, at getting, you know, a, a, a main board listing in the United States. That's something that's currently under review. Um, 
And then beyond that, you know, we're continuing to work with a number of investment banks and brokers um, to get some more research coverage. We currently have three independent um, uh, uh, brokers uh, covering us from a research perspective, and we expect to get um, an, an extra couple of brokers um, over the coming uh, months and quarters are going to initiate research coverage on us. So um, that, that should be really helpful for investors to be able to understand our portfolio a bit better. Um, and then I think from a from a acquisition perspective, you know, we're certainly not sitting on our hands, uh, Ryan. So we've got a few really exciting deals that we're working on where, you know, we think we've got a, a proverbial tiger by the tail or a few tigers by the tail um, on, on other acquisitions where, you know, we're identifying royalties that we think could be in production longer than we as management will even be alive. So we're, we're, ta- we're looking at some, some, some royalties where they're multi-decade potential mine lives. Um, so, and without getting, you know, without losing our Understand. discipline on, on pricing, pricing the deals. So investors can look forward to some very um, attractively priced, but um, large uh, royalty acquisitions um, where we're not going to need to raise any further equity. Um, you know, we're not going to need to do any capital raising to do those deals. We're doing them in a very sort of capital efficient way um, to bring that value into our portfolio. So that's a little bit of about what's uh, what we think the future holds for Vox and our shareholders. That's incredible. I, I have to answer, I have to ask you one question from my own personal playbook, Spencer. I, it's um, one that I've wondered and I, I had it earmarked for you to ask. You were just quoted on a, on a news release here talking about some of the drilling results that had come back on some of the growth properties within the portfolio. I, I know it's of interest to look at the tip of the iceberg, right? Those producing assets and adding to that. That's Those are really the home runs in the portfolio. But I would say that there's a beneath the surface type of value that I hope you're getting credit for because each and every one of those progressions that are made on the growth and even some of the early stage projects, does that create value, even though it might not be an asset producing yet? Because you just announced a host of that stuff. And I've been covering you guys for the last month since I researched you. And you guys have got news coming out all the time on progressions that are being made, on royalties that you hold, on companies that are marching toward that producing stage. Can you comment a little bit about the below the surface uh, value at Vox Royalty? Yeah, absolutely, Ryan. Um, so I guess when investors think about our portfolio of royalties, um, so as you mentioned, we've got five producing royalties currently. Um, we have about 20, uh, 20 other royalties that are in some stage of development, whether yeah. they're either in construction, about to move into production, or the, you know the engineering work is just being finalised, or you know they're they're moving they're moving into sort of some form of engineering study. Um, mm-hmm. So those projects, I guess, we have a clearer line of sight as to how they go from their current stage into production. Um, and look, when and then we've got about thirty royalties that we would call, I guess, exploration stage, which are mm-hmm. aggressively being drilled out. Now, when we look at the, the rates of return um, and the, the, how many times our money we want to make on different investments, you know, typically for our producing royalties, those are investments where, you know, w- we aim to make anywhere from say 3X to, you know, 8X our money um, on those investments um, uh, where ideally we can get payback on our money within, you know, ideally within 12 to 24 months. Um, now, if that sounds attractive to investors, which hopefully it does, um, you know, what's even more attractive is when you go into the exploration stage bucket of royalties. So we've got 30 royalties in that bucket. And those are royalties that typically cost us anywhere between 50,000 to say 200,000. Yeah, now, nice. what the, the types of returns we're aiming for on those properties are between, you know, 20X to 50X. Um, yeah. So, buying a royalty today for $50,000, which, you know, we think could make us, you know, call it three to $6 million. Um, you know, when we, when we say $50,000, people say, well, it sounds like a little tiny deal, but when you're targeting, so 20 X 40 X to 60 X, um, return on your money, um, and you've got 30 of those projects, um, you know, each month as these properties are drilled, 
um, the probability that they move into production increases. So, you know, the probability that we make 20x or 30x on, on some of these uh, exploration royalties increases with each drill hole. Um, and the benefit for us as, as a company is, you know, we don't pay for any of that drilling. So, you know, God forbid, Brian, if, if, if our management team got hit by a bus tomorrow, which we hope doesn't happen, sure. um, you know, our royalty portfolio, similar to a, you know, a wine cellar, would just continue to appreciate in value. Um, yes. So as these exploration properties are drilled out, they, the probability they return cash flow to us um, and get brought into production increases materially. So uh, Vox investors get the benefit of every month where it is gifted with a huge amount of drilling and a huge amount of discovery, exactly. um, which we pay no extra dollars for. So yeah. it's, you know, it's, it's easy to get excited about that because it's such a capital efficient and high return business model. Yeah, I, was, I had to ask you that because I've watched a lot of your interviews online and you hadn't been asked quite that question in, in my way. So thank you very much for that. Um, last question, and then we'll kind of conclude the interview a little bit. Um, as a Vox shareholder yourself, uh, what are you most excited about? Uh, look, I, I'm most excited about um, just delivering what we've already committed to investors. That sounds really boring, but... Um, you know, I, I've got four of my brothers and sisters of Vox shareholders as well, Ryan. And um, I can assure you that, you know, God forbid any day the share price goes down, I'm getting, you know, phone calls from, from you know, multiple brothers sure. and sisters saying, uh, yes. what's going on? Um, <laughs> so, you know, it is quite, it is very personal um, for, for us as management. You know, we own 15% of the company and our families own, you know, extra, sure. extra on top of that. So, Look, I think delivering on what we've committed to, so delivering on exponential revenue growth, um, delivering on you know organic growth in the number of producing royalties we have, continuing to find diamonds in the rough, new royalty acquisitions, um, and then importantly, continuing to have the share price reflect the value of this really unique business that we've created. Um, you know that is what really excites us is you know creating something that's very different. And then having uh, you know, our friends, family, and you know, all of our shareholders re be rewarded with that really unique business that we've built. Spencer Cole, Chief Investment Officer of Vox Royalty. If you guys want more information, I highly encourage you to kick over to the very, very useful uh, website at voxroyalty.com. The OTC Quality Board markets here, VOXCF, ticker symbol, I will share in the description of this video. Spencer, I will kick it over you, to you for the last word here. Thank you so much for being a guest on the Independent Investor Channel. Awesome, awesome interviews. Great to have you. No, thanks. Thanks so much for your time, uh, Ryan. And, and look, thanks so much for your listeners for, for tuning in. Um, right. We would welcome with open arms uh, your listeners to, to join us on this uh, on this this rocket ship adventure uh, that, we, that we're, 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 we're building at Vox. Um, you know, we're extremely excited about what we've built and, and what's ahead of us, um, we we really do believe we're really just at the tip of the iceberg in terms of you know what what we can deliver for shareholders. So uh, yeah, thanks for your time and well welcome to Vox. Yeah, I appreciate that. Thank you so much, Spencer. Be well and and keep keep it up. All right, keep up the keep up the great work. Take it easy, my friend. Thanks, Ron. All right, bye. Now.